Gallimera, Gallimera, Gallimera. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Trying a new style of broadcast today. Um, I've not been happy with the quality of the picture images uh, via Restream because obviously when I'm doing that it's actually streaming to the internet uh, and then being recorded. So I thought, well, I'm going to dig out the old uh, Canon camera and uh, basically set that up. And uh, that will obviously be a massive improvement in pictures and it shouldn't take any longer to upload onto the internet but at least the picture quality will be clearer and better and as you can see I'm still banned from uh, live streaming on Facebook which is a real inconvenience at the moment so again I'm going to start checking again uh, to see if I can uh, get myself back onto that platform because it just makes doing things quicker and easier and also it affects just my live stream broadcasting from Magdalena's at night just to show you just how busy or not busy we are as well and that's kind of interfering with things as well so anyway I'm gonna crack on uh, let's look at the weather this morning then it's very sunny and warm thank you to Amanda for your concise um, uh, weather forecast she says temperatures today Ginge are gonna be 36 degrees they're gonna feel like 38 have a great day I've got it she said yesterday that at quarter past 10 her time where she lives just up the road from us it was 36 degrees on her balcony and the lowest temperature she said overnight that they uh, that she had experienced uh, was around about 25 degrees Celsius now I've got to be honest on my bike yesterday when I was in Magdalena's the temperature on my bike was 45 degrees that's the temperature on the bike um, when I got back to the house it had dropped to about maybe 43 uh, when I went to work last night the temperature was 39 degrees Celsius when I went to work around about quarter to set, quarter to eight last night and when I was driving back from uh, uh, Magdalena's in the wee hours this morning the temperature was believe it or not uh, round about 28 uh, driving back uh, and it didn't drop much I can tell you now by the time I got back to the house so anyway once again uh, they are warning people to be careful about fire risk also hydration as well make sure you put your sunblock on make sure you stay hydrated that means not drinking too many amounts of alcohol because that does actually dehydrate the body but keep a balance all right that's what the uh, saying and you won't end up in hospital with heat stroke all right now um arrivals today here on the island i'm just gonna look really at the british flights at the moment uh we've got this morning a flight in from manchester at 12 55 12 35 we've got a flight in with jet 2 from the east midlands as well the flight from manchester is jet 2 as well uh we've also got an easy jet in from uh, Luton uh, we've also got a jet 2 again in from uh, Stansted at uh, one o'clock um, going down the list then we've got British Airways flight in this afternoon at 1635 uh, that is coming in from London Heathrow uh, and then we've got another EasyJet flight this evening at uh, 10 past 7 and that is coming in uh, from London Gatwick and there's a second page of arrivals as well that's how busy we are on a Saturday uh, there's another easy jet in at 10 past 7 tonight uh, that's coming in from London Gatwick and then there's a Newcastle how we the Geordies are here and they're flying in on a jet 2 flight at uh, 2053 from Newcastle so there you go those are the arrivals from the UK and can I say now I'm definitely seeing more of a presence of uh, the British in Magdalena's at night than what I've ever seen through uh, the part of the season that we've had and long may it continue all right uh, because again there is worry that the island could go into red hopefully it hasn't happened yet and it's not going to happen in August so fingers crossed toes crossed everything crossed right COVID in the last 24 hours that brings me on to that um, it is up and down again it's up on the rise again uh, did report to you yesterday new infections 2696 today 2845 that brings a total amount of infections since the pandemic started 
to 490,552. We are slowly getting towards the 500,000 mark. Uh, when it comes to cases being identified into entries into the country, well, that is just down slightly. Yesterday we had nine identifications and today uh, they are talking of eight identifications. Now, when it comes to the national stats of what uh, infections are going on where across Greece, at the moment the, the numbers really are interesting. Mykonos, one of the islands that we're following because uh, we kind of will be taking a lead from Mykonos, they reported 17 new cases on their island. Rhodes, uh, which I've been looking at because Steve Kimberley's been asking about Rhodes. Uh, Rhodes had 104 uh, new cases of infection uh, recorded. Now, Lefkada, one of the very small Ionian islands, that's one of our neighbours, uh, they've had nine new cases of the uh, virus there. Corfu, uh, they've had 26. Kefalonia, who had nothing yesterday, have had one case uh, reported. And as for Zach and Thos, well, I'm afraid our stats are still pretty uh, high, really, for our size of Ireland. Uh, we've had 19 new cases reported here within the last 24 hours on Zach and Thos. So it means then that uh, for the last day of July, we've had 268 cases this month alone. Uh, when you consider that in June we'd only had seven, and in May we had 44, and in April we had 177, and in March we had 184, and in February we had 70, and January we had 30. This month has been the biggest amount of infection recorded on the island. And again, it doesn't bode us well in our epidemiology with the rules that the Greek government uh, are looking at. And trust me, we are in the microscope at the moment as to whether we might go into a higher alert state within Greece. So fingers crossed we don't because it would create untold problems for tourism, just for running business here as well. And we don't want the extreme measures that Mykonos had. And I believe they won't do that because at the end of the day, if they did put those draconian measures in, they would be compelled to police it. And up in the areas like Lagana, I think the police would have some big problems, even though they have the numbers now. But I think riot police on a beach is going to do far, far worse uh, PR image for the island than uh, basically the virus itself. So anyway, we're going to keep an eye on that and look and see what decisions are made. Now, when it comes to deaths, I'm afraid they've started to creep up again. Nine deaths were reported on my last report today. It's 12 deaths. The grand total of deaths since the pandemic started has been 12,948, slowly inching ourselves towards uh, 13,000 deaths since the beginning of the pandemic. 96% of those people had underlying health problems or were over the ages of 70. And uh, just to put that in context, the average death rate uh, in, in Greece in 2019 was around about 329 cases a day. So 12 on top of that isn't a great deal in reality. However, it is the death rate that they, are, they, sh they look at as to determining the epidemiology and uh, the way things are progressing. But anyway, our condolences to the families that are affected. Uh, there's been no deaths here on Zakynthos for COVID. Uh, we've had no deaths in July. We had no deaths in June. The last time we had deaths was in May, and that was an 85-year-old man, a 70-year-old woman, and also another 70-year-old man. Um, as for critical cases, now the Greek press have been going on about how these are going up and they are going up. 157 cases reported last time, now it's 165 critical cases, 103 of those are male, 62 of those are female. Average age for people in critical care, around about 67 years of age and 83% uh, percent of those have underlying health conditions or are over the age of 70. So again, the stats at the moment, I would say for Greece, they are kind of mixed at the moment, to be honest, up and down in certain areas, but on the whole, uh, they are a cause for concern in regards to tourism and uh, the way that August is now getting itself set up. 
Um, just to let you know, still no information about critical cases and treatment at the Zakynthos Hospital. Uh, all we know from the quarantine hotel from their last report was that there was 42 people in the quarantine hotel. And so far, when you look at the amount of epidemiology numbers, uh, the fact that the it seems to be not people bringing it in from outside, again, it is within the local population that these numbers are going up. So again, uh, no mention of the epidemiology in regards to the COVID clinic or in regards to the quarantine hotel at the moment. Right, today's news then, uh, top story at the moment as far as Zakynthos is concerned was Thursday afternoon, the court decision concerning the death of Eleni uh, Avaraki uh, was announced and according to the verdict, all those involved, doctors and staff at the Zakynthos Hospital were all acquitted. Now, the death of the mother of two occurred in November 2016 after she'd uh, gone to hospital to have a simple removal of a splinter uh, from her leg, uh, from which uh, that she was admitted to the hospital in Zakynthos. However, complications arose, and it's not very clear as to what these complications were, but basically she was then taken to the Rio Hospital. Uh, for those people who don't know, the Rio Hospital is in Patra, where eventually uh, she passed away overnight uh, from basically complications from having a splinter removed from her leg. Now, yesterday after the announcement of the court's decision, her relatives erupted into protest. They raised uh, public questions about the loss of the, uh, of the woman who passed away suddenly and unnecessarily. And she was only 41 years of age, which makes it sad. Plus, she was a mother of two children as well. Now, according to the close relatives uh, of the deceased from the trial, they said they did not receive any answers as to the real cause of Eleni's death. Uh, for its part, the Medical Association of Zakynthos, as the persecuted doctors... Uh, where its members were among them, the uh, current member of parliament, yes, the MP of the island, uh, he was a doctor at the time, uh, issued a statement which points out that justice has been done. And the announcement states, among other things, by unanimous decision of the three-member misdemeanor court of Zakynthos, all the doctors and nurses of the General Hospital were solemnly acquitted uh, of Zakynthos, were accused of the death of our unfortunate fellow citizen in the year 2016. Uh, with the above decision, the timeless views of then Scientific Council of General Staff were justified uh, of Zakynthos and the Medical Association of Zakynthos, who always supported the innocence of the, those involved, the medical staff, the nursing staff, who had been unjustly and for obvious expediencies accused. Uh, the court recognising the seriousness of the case uh, with implacable thorough procedures, uh, uh, they then rendered justice. So again, the family are not happy. Obviously, the hospital are happy. They've had their names cleared in the eyes of the law. But again, the family is saying there are still questions that have not yet been answered and uh, they want more, uh, obviously, answers to come forth. So again, very, very sad. And again, our condolences to the family involved. And again, another story uh, in which to keep our eye on. Anyway, um, another crazy story yesterday involving the fire brigade. And I love the line uh, that the Greek press used, in a state of a muck, that's the wording that they used. A 55-year-old compatriot uh, broke into the building of the fire department in Zakynthos, down by the airport, and a man armed with a knife threatened the firefighters. Now, the 55-year-old uh, is actually part of a lawsuit against him because the police have uh, uh, accused him of being involved in activities. I'm not going to go into those at the moment. But they also located a, a, a warehouse in Skopos uh, where the man was then hiding after he'd gone in and threatened the firefighters with a knife. And according to information, his target was a Pacific firefighter whom he tried to attack with a knife. And the motives for the attack seem to be different uh, from the firefighters. So there's a little bit of confusion there. The 55-year-old is expected to give his explanations to the Sackenthos public prosecutor today at noon. And uh, we'll see uh, what comes out in the court. Uh, also as well, a uh, local of Zakynthos was arrested in the early hours of Friday morning 
uh, by police uh, for drug possession. Uh, the man basically was located by the police in the city of Zakynthos and during searches they found and confiscated uh, raw cannabis weighing about 28.8 grams and they also found a small amount of heroin as well. Anyway, the man uh, or the person has been taken before the public prosecutor uh, and again, nothing more has been heard at the moment. Now, uh, another national story which does have an effect here on Zakynthos in what's been going on in the way of the crime wave here, plus the fact that we're reinforced by more police this summer than this island has ever had in previous uh, times. It seems that in regards to what's been seen as a resounding message uh, to the so-called Greek Mafia, a court this week uh, handed heavy sentences to organised crime enforcers after a trial that lasted more than two years. Now, the trial which ended on Wednesday concerns an investigation which started in 2015 into three groups of thugs, that's the wording they're using, who were responsible for collecting protection money from hundreds of shops in Attica, that is in the Athens area, while they were also involved in drug trafficking and violence against uh, sports officials, believe it or not. Anyway, uh, I've got a feeling that could be betting shops, I think, at the moment. Anyway, one of the other defendants, uh, 22, uh, were given prison sentences, with three of them receiving terms of 30 years. Now, the court also request, uh, refused a request by the lawyers of three of the defendants for suspended sentences. According to legal circles, uh, the final outcome of the trial was influenced by the ongoing turf war between rival gangs and the message of the Citizens Protection Minister that it is at war with organised crime. Hence the reinforcement of police here on Zakynthos. Uh, people are saying that the whole uh, feeling of uh, Lagner at the moment has taken on a very, very macabre feeling down there. People say they're going down and it is feeling very quiet, very empty. Uh, I wouldn't say ghostly, but it's not the same as obviously uh, the police are enforcing and cracking down on behaviour in that area of the island. Uh, interestingly, uh, again to do with the Prime Minister this time, investment plans in pharmaceutical sector uh, with the injection of 1.2 billion euros uh, through uh, which is going to be given round about 2025 were examined uh, between the Prime Minister Mitsotakis and representatives of the Panhelic Association of the Pharmaceutical Industry at the Maximus Mansion on Thursday. Now it was said uh, by the Prime Minister uh, we want the best medicine at the best price. Our policy has visible results. We have supported and will continue to support the domestic pharmaceutical industry, which invests in research and innovation. Uh, we can find the position we deserve in the world market. Uh, the decision you made in 2019 to offset investment costs with the clawback paid by the pharmaceutical industry was a success and was absolutely justified. There is a huge interest in investing funds uh, which did not exist before. Uh, the situation in the field of investments is the best in the last decades. And he added that the president of the Panhelic Association and Pharmaceutical Industry and Vice President and Managing Director of the uh, Emplus Group, uh, Theodos Treplom, uh, was in agreement with the statement of the Prime Minister. So basically what they're looking at now is, uh, I've got a feeling that the virus and the, the vaccine has been behind all of this that Greece now wants to invest more money into its own domestic pharmaceutical industry, uh, which is a good thing. It means that drugs will, will be cheaper. Uh, and um, we'll say it has two-edged sword here, to be quite honest. Uh, I hope that, yes, the money that is invested, uh, we do see changes in the cost of drugs and the cost of prescription medicines. Uh, but also it's going to be interesting to see if... Uh, is maybe Greece going to start working on its own version of the virus, of the vaccine? That'll be interesting to, uh, to see if that uh, transpires as well. And also another interesting crime-related story uh, coming from uh, Athens. A 40-year-old man killed his 31-year-old wife at noon on Friday inside their Athens home uh, before handing himself into the police. Uh, police found the body of the woman after rushing to the apartment which was located in the suburb of Daphne 
According to the police, the perpetrator claimed he had murdered uh, the woman uh, because he was jealous. Uh, the man is expected to be taken before the prosecutor as the investigation continues. And once again, our condolences to the family uh, that are involved in that tragic case. Also, uh, it also raises mental health issues, etc., about the extreme measures that lockdown is putting on relationships and families. And uh, we'll see if uh, that is part of the play uh, in this case. Anyway, a, a nice little happy story, and finally, about three remarkable marine animals of Greece and, and where you can go and see them. Uh, we already know about the turtles, you can come and see them here in Zakynthos at the National Marine Park, no problem at all. But there's also other animals here that are very rare and also endangered that actually make their homes here in Greece. First of that is the monk seal. Uh, that is the rarest of all marine animals in Greece, the monk seal. Believe it or not, is a cave dwelling species and is seldom seen. Uh, you may remember that the Isle of Alonsis, uh, somebody decided that they would kill their mascot. Such a criminal act. There is just over 600 of these animals left, they reckon, in the wild. And uh, it's a breed that truly sets himself apart. And Costis, the name of the, uh, the monk seal that was killed there, very, very sad uh, that uh, whoever it was decided to take that animal's life for whatever reason, God knows. But uh, that is the location where you will find the monk seals. And I think a lot of them now are going to keep themselves very much to themselves uh, because of what has gone on through that person who decided to... Uh, uh, kill that uh, mascot. Um, just be aware the police are still investigating that. Thank you for people who sent their messages of support and anger at the fact that somebody would stoop so low as to kill an animal as that. And they're so human looking when they're in the water as well. It, it makes it even worse in a lot of respects. The other animal as well, which uh, some people may not realise is here, the largest uh, marine animal in Greece is, believe it or not, the sperm whale. Yet, yeah, uh, reaching sizes of up to 20 meters and weighing about 60 tons uh, these i like the way they describe them as squid fighting goliaths are an awe-inspiring sight and you can actually see them well in fact you can see them there's uh, two locations really uh, one of them is in uh, what is known as the hellenic trench which is in the aegean sea where you're not likely to see it unless you're going to go diving around that area However, the other area is actually in the Aegean and is actually off the coast of Mykonos, believe it or not. Uh, the animal normally can be spotted between May and September uh, around that location. So if you're over in the, uh, in the Mykonos and around that area, keep an eye out. You never know, you might be lucky enough to see one of these creatures which are absolutely fantastic and majestic. And they only eat squid, all right? That's another reason. Don't put your plastic bags in the water because the turtles think they're squid, and so do the, so do the, uh, would you call it, the whales. And the other animal, uh, which is uh, seen very popular, and finally, uh, another animal that is seen here, uh, had a bit of an interruption, I had to reboot, uh, is the striped dolphin. Now, striped dolphins are a must-see for people who are lucky enough, they do come out in abundance. It's difficult trying to pinpoint where these animals are because they're very quick, they're very intelligent, they like to move about. However, if you're lucky enough to see them, uh, some of the best places to see them are in the Gulf of Corinth and also the Ionian Sea. And yes, Jane uh, and her tour guides uh, have been spotting dolphins uh, while they've been doing the shipwreck tour uh, going up there to uh, Navigo Beach. Uh, they got escorted the other day the weather was bad, but they had an escort of dolphins who put a bit of a show on and it kind of made up for the fact that they didn't actually get a chance to get ashore and actually go and get near and get close to the shipwreck. So once again, keep your eyes open. You might be lucky enough. I know when Jane and I, uh, we went on the ferry one time across to Kalini, uh, we spotted dolphins there escorting the, uh, escorting the ferry all the way over to Kalini. Right, so that's it from me for today. Can I just say um, I have posted up a reply to uh, Flippy Flip Flop or whatever his name was about uh, the one star review in TripAdvisor. I like to think that this uh, reply 
actually uh, is a work of art in replying to the man's one star comments about basically people doing their job and keeping people safe uh, in contrary to the man uh, thinking that we were overzealous in policing of Magdalenas. So please have a read of that on TripAdvisor, see what you think, uh, because again, lots of people sending me messages again about this guy, uh, and basically, I was told, uh, why don't you get it taken down? Why don't you have it removed? And I said, well, no, because in some ways, that one star comment with my reply, I think sends out a very clear, concise message. If you can't prove that you're vaccinated, you're not coming up into our clean uh, vaccinated area. That's the bottom line of it, full stop. So again, have a read. Let me know what you think. Oh, and please, if you want to write other comments about Magdalena's on top of that one to either justify your experience, uh, we, we'd like to see those as well. And also, thank you last night. The dance anthem show last night went absolutely brilliantly. Uh, what a great, great night we had. Uh, we were busy. I was really shocked how busy we were last night with people, both upstairs in the vaccinated area and downstairs in the mixed area. And also uh, Ben Warner from Beats Radio sends his regards as well. Loving the shows coming out of uh, Magdalena's, which are now live. And don't forget, you can watch last week's live show or listen to last week's live show on beatsradio.co.uk. That should be broadcasted this weekend as a repeat. So uh, pop in and have a look and see what you think. Anyway, that's it from me. I've now got to get this up online. We'll see how long that's going to take. And uh, let me know what your feelings about the quality and improvement of uh, broadcast is. And I'll catch you later. Ta-ra!